Hello, my beautiful friends. It's me, Stormy, and we're going to talk about this big business of the Saturn Pluto conjunction that is coming January 12th of 2020. And this is a nice big deal for us. Astrologically, it's a cool event because it only happens every 34 years, right? So this is kind of a big deal. The last time we saw this in play was in 1982, November to be exact. So what I'm going to tell you is for everybody. But if you were born in 1982 or 1983, right in there, I really want your ears to kind of perk up a little bit and see what you can align with here because it is your years and it is your generation that is going to take a very big piece in a lot of um, big global things that are happening. These new changing ideas, this new kind of not new world order, but global order that will be coming to the table as well. And many of your ideas and think back over the last couple of years, maybe you haven't felt so confident in some of these ideas and you will be a part of what pushes that forward. Now, everybody plays a part. That's why I say everybody, let's jump in and let's talk about what this means for our lives and talk about what this can look like on a global scale according to the astrological patterns that we've seen before, okay? So we've got these two planets, and these are two pretty serious planets, and they're not the warmest, most cozy planets uh, that we have in the zodiac for sure, but they are both pretty serious, and they mean pretty serious business. Now, I would think many of us have already started to feel um, a fair amount of their effects as they have waned in and out of getting close enough to each other, but they will actually become exact on June 12th at 22 degrees of Capricorn. So I would also tell you, check out your chart, and if you don't have a chart, please grab one from me, pull up a free one, go to whomever you trust in this astrology realm, and grab your chart so you can see how this will actually play out in your world because these are gonna be big deal kind of energies. So whatever you've got at 22 degrees of not not only Capricorn, but what you've got at 22 degrees of any of the cardinal signs, Aries, Cancer, Libra, or Capricorn, you're going to want to check these areas out to see what kind of actual impacts they'll have on your chart, okay? But as we see these two coming together, Pluto is trying to help something die off. It's a phoenix energy, so it says, hey, this needs to die off this way so that it can live in another way. So we have this very regenerative um, phoenix kind of energy of needing to kind of pull something away. It's empowerment, but it's empowerment that comes through transformation. And in order to transform, something has to stop being what it was and get to be something else. But there is a process. And most likely we felt it or you've seen it in your life where you're feeling like, I need to do something. I need to move towards this. You feel a calling towards something that's maybe in a little bit of a different direction than you were heading before. Now Saturn comes in as our timekeeper and our maturity energy and our spiritual fitness kind of energy, right? He comes in and he says, look, I'm going to help you come to the next level, but I'm going to do that by helping you mature. You've got to see things from a different perspective. I'm going to show you how to use these resources. I'm going to also show you what doesn't fit. And the thing that I love personally about the Saturn energy is because it acts as Kronos, that timekeeper. Saturn's like, honey, we are on the clock. I need you to let go of that, which Pluto will help you with, so that we can take this to the next level, to the next best platform, foundation that we can stand on to get things done. So it's a wonderful combination of these two energies, but they do create a very slow evolutionary process, which we can see that the theme of that evolutionary process is going to be in the areas that is happening in your life, in our world, things cannot stay the same. If they have not been working, if they are broken, they either need to be fixed or be discarded, but they cannot stay the same as they were if they have been inefficient. So what it also means for us, and this is kind of the theme of 2020, is that you're going to put in some hard work. But Jupiter moving into the energy of Capricorn has also helped us have the wisdom of understanding the endurance we're going to take on to build something new, to build this new foundation that's absolutely beautiful. But don't be surprised this year that at your 22 degree placements, you find yourself needing to work a little bit harder to change something. Um, anything that has outlived the life that it can travel with you, you're going to be redoing that. Now, I will say too that this is a, a big evolutionary process and it can feel heavy and it can absolutely feel painful or feel like loss because something has to go in order for something better to grow there. But I know plenty of people as well who have very much so been doing some work. So this has almost felt like a saving grace to them where they're like, yes, thank you, Pluto. 
Thank you, Saturn, for coming along because it made them step up, right? They were like, what am I going to do for my future? What is the foundation I'm willing to stand on? So if this has been your experience, enjoy this energy. It's just going to keep illuminating the path for you and show you how to continue to build these foundations that are solid. And these are going to be the strong foundations that you stand on for the next 34 years of your life until they come back around. So it's actually a really beautiful kind of energy, okay? Now, before we jump in and talk about other ways that this brilliant stuff is going to manifest, I want to talk about what happens if you have this particular placement in your natal chart or in whatever chart that you're looking at. When Saturn and Pluto are together in the natal chart, one of the things that happens is, first of all, you learn to be very, very re resourceful. And you also learn to be exceptionally, exceptionally patient and resilient because this is a slow moving energy for you. It is very easy with this energy to be hard on yourself, but remember the grace of expansion and growing out of this, that you're evolving. This is an evolutionary energy. This can also be an energy where maybe in your chart or wherever these areas are at, you have felt this sense of loss or you have felt like you had hardship or failure in these areas in some way, shape or form. And what's important about it is to remember how it's trying to evolve you. It's telling you that in that area of your life or in connection to whatever it's connected to, let's say it's connected to your midheaven, then maybe you have to look at how you're doing something and come up a level, do it a little bit differently that has a higher ethical, moral standard that has more integrity to it in some way, shape or form. I can tell you that because these energies are so strong that having, um, being resourceful, being organized, having a fair amount of self-discipline, these are all qualities that can definitely be in your favor. Every placement comes with its good, comes with its bad, but this is certainly an energy of building a foundation even within your own life. And sometimes that can just feel very, very hard or feel like you've really had to work for it at times. So if you do have that placement in your chart, I would love to hear from you down below to hear what your experience of this particular energy is because maybe this is something you can share with us so we can understand from a personal lived experience um, how we can work with these energies as well so feel free to put that in the comment section down below okay all right now let's jump in and talk about what's actually happening at this conjunction so that i can get you in and get you out but i do want you to understand what is happening with the players that are in place. Now, first of all, we've got Pluto who's in Capricorn and Pluto has been in Capricorn since 2008. Okay, so this has been some long working on us. We have seen these areas. It's not like we're getting rid of or we're judging up or we've been evolving out of something that's brand new. It's something that's been here for a while. These are two planetary powerhouses and Pluto in and of itself working over here since 2008. You've been dying off. There's been pieces of you that have been transforming. It's like an onion. You're peeling. You're becoming this next version of yourself with these different eyes, these different perspectives, these different glasses. So needing to let go of things that don't work and having these feelings of, like I said, feeling like I have to, I need to, I feel called to change something. I feel called to make this better. I feel called to make me better. I feel called to understand something bigger. These are the experiences of Pluto and Capricorn that you've maybe been taking on for sure. Now, as Saturn has been in Capricorn and he's whipping around much, much more quickly, right? He's getting around much more quickly than Pluto has. So Saturn has been working his way through the energy of Capricorn just for the last two years. So we've really seen it from, from January 2018 and then, and technically, technically December of 2017 but real forward motion since 2018. So either way, Saturn's been here. He's been working as well. And Saturn matures us, like I said. And in the energy of Capricorn, where he's at home, he's comfortable, he's ready to get your foundations and your structures redone. He is helping you be ready to take on some real life commitments, right? Like I'm gonna commit to this for the next 29 years of my life. And how do I make it solid? How do I manage things? How do I take on new responsibilities? My legacy right? What have I got set up for my legacy? These may all be things that you have seen in the works 
anyways. And what doesn't belong, both Saturn and Pluto have been slowly weeding out for you. And even if it's been something as, as simple for you as I need to get better time management, I need to have new equipment in order to be efficient, I need to go talk to my managers to see what I need to do to come to the next level. These energies have been working and kind of giving us the guidepost to the way forward. And I can tell you, the more intense the experience has been, it's just telling you growth is needed there. So if it has been an intense time for you, look at where it's showing you. And if you can't see it, ask somebody outside of you for some advice or some guidance. These are not energies that are meant to just make you suffer, suffer, suffer. The universe does not hate us. It's actually working towards our greatest good. So go to where the pain is at because that's where the work is at. Or go to where the immense joy or responsibility is at because that's where these two planets are working for you, okay? So as they come together on January 12th, they're in this conjunction. It's beautiful in that area of your life. It may feel a little bit like a loss or it may feel a little bit like you really have to step up. There could be some intensity around it. These transits come together and bring us the work. They bring us the influence of the work. So make sure you check your chart to see exactly where you will be doing your work because on the other side, what it brings forward is it doesn't leave you the loss. The universe does not leave a hole ever, right? So it's going to bring you more refinement. It's going to bring you more maturity. It's going to bring you more success that you can actually stand on in these particular areas. Now I do want to and have to talk about this on a global level as well because these are outer planets for us so they do work in a global realm as well. So on a global level, we can expect to see very big shifts in our organizations, in people who have been in positions of power, of yeah, Uranus is still in Taurus, so banking, food, any of those kind of industries, we will see big changes happening for them. We will also begin to see big advancements in technology as these energies move towards the Aquarian body as well. So what we can expect to also experience in our global world is maybe interactions with global organizations, the law, um, companies, anything like that, that also make a shift how we are doing business and how we get to do business in our personal lives. It very much so will trickle down ideas about what government and power should look like in a global sense will absolutely light up for us during these energies as well. I think that we can also expect to see truly, and we've been in it since, um, Saturn was in Scorpio. We've really been seeing the weeding out in many of our government bodies and many of our global um, political bodies, people who have been in positions of power, their secrets have been coming out, whether they be sexual, financial, anything like that. There's really been a digging out because it's like a harvesting, a cleaning up time. So those who have been in positions of power will still, I believe, be under some level of, of scrutiny because the whole idea of these guys at a global level is that the old ways that don't work, that are worn out, that need something different will be pushed aside. They will get pushed out and we'll start to see that work really kick in or see a significant shift of that as we get here to January. Now I do, and I have done plenty of research on the connections and the patterns to warring energies during Saturn-Pluto conjunctions as well. And there is possibility for that at a global level. There's absolute possibility to it because we're not taking on a new um, conflict, it would be something we've already been in. So maybe we are having some resolution or we're looking at um, interactions from the United States or parts that we're playing in different countries and things like that. Um, certainly, because um, on the chart, we see a whole bunch of bodies happening in the energy of Capricorn. We've got Jupiter, we've got Saturn, we've got Pluto, we've got the transiting um, south node is up there. We have got Mercury at this time that's up there. Uh, we've got, who else? We've got the sun at this time that's also going to be up there. It's a fair amount of energies that are happening in the body of Capricorn. And then that transiting north node sits down just opposite of it in the energy of Cancer. So what that gives me the indication of is with all these systems, all of these heavier bodies up here, there could even be an energy of maybe um, a structure or a system or a body or a country trying to move into a position of dominance over 
um, this Cancerian energy and where can you see that flow? Where can you see that pattern in your own life as well? Where have you been feeling like there's something that's dominating you, even if it's down to a negative thought process, government, um, education, any of these things, where have you felt dominated and it feels like it's, or you felt pressure and it feels like it's dominating you down here and you're going to be willing to break out of that to take on new responsibilities and kind of work against that. So in the energy of, of warring energies or energies that have to take on each other, um, I do think that this will bring it to the table on both a global and a personal level as well. But either way, what we do know is that from this particular conjunction, we've got a new 34-year cycle that is set up, that is in play, that is going to be ready to go, and it is going to leave a little energetic stamp for all of us to dig down, to do the work, whatever's not working, whatever's worn out, let it go. Fix it or let it go. And we can expect to see that in our personal lives as well as at this very global sphere. I look forward to seeing you on the other side of this conjunction because I would love to hear, some of you are brand new to astrology, some have been studying, some study astrology and other things. I would love to see where you see this pattern of this energetic like stamp showing up out in the world as well. So please do share with me in the comment section down below. We're all here to learn, okay? All right, you guys like this video, comment, share, subscribe, I love you very, very much, and I look forward to walking with you all the way through 2020. Bye, my friends.